Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Airport Safety Channel, your channel of knowledge. And I am your host, Isaac Otu. It is a privilege to welcome you today. And I am so elated to be joining you. And I hope you have shared and informed your friends to also log into this channel that we be learn together. Airport inspector, do you have what it takes? Part three, we have started already with, are you ready? And that took part one and part two. Today we are starting part three, which says, do you have what it takes? Our question for today is, do you have what it takes? We have gone through what is expected of an aviation inspector and we will try to look at the qualities or knowledge required to be a good inspector. Our outline for this week is as follows. We'll have a quick overview of what we have done in the past, and we are also going to look at whether you are working in the aviation industry or which area of aviation you are involved with. We will have general airside training as a topic. We will also look at personal development, tools for performing airside inspections, and also have a new slide called your input that will also seek for information from you. We will, as usual, end with a bullet for you. I will encourage you to subscribe and please share with your friends and encourage them to subscribe. So the question still remains that as an airport inspector, do you know what is involved? That is what we did in the previous week and we looked at the airport operator because we have already looked at what the CA is doing. So last week we answered the question, are you ready as an airport inspector? The presentation focused on the airport operator and we learned that the CA has standards mandating the aerodrome operator to have an aerodrome inspection program. The airport operator is solely accountable for the inspection of the aerodrome, even if third parties are engaged in performing that activity within their service area. The airport operator is still accountable for ensuring that the inspections are done. And we also look at the aerodrome inspection program and also internal audit program. And therefore, in our presentations, we'll be using inspection and auditing interchangeably because the sole purpose of this channel is to build you up from being an inspector to becoming a fully competent auditor kindly watch the previous videos if you have not done so to catch up on what you missed before watching the following video so are you working in aviation. Today, we want to look at the knowledge, experience, and abilities of an airport personnel. The knowledge gap is wide and depending on where you find yourself, you may need to be trained in one thing or the other. There are programs that every person accessing the airport requires to be trained in, especially airport security. But in general, the following are universal. That is, your educational background is important if you are working in the aviation industry. Your orientation on the job roles that you must perform is also important. Certification for your competencies, that is, specific certification for specific jobs are sometimes required. You also need to have induction training, such as aviation security training, on the job training whilst you have been employed, specific job tax, and recertification of your capacity and professional training as required, and also continuous 
self-development that is personal self-development is also very important general airside training before you can conduct inspection on the airside you must have gained a certain level of knowledge we will start from the first day of accessing the airport that is to access the various zones of the airport everyone requires an access badge you must be trained in airport security and safety and successfully pass a form of examination before you can access or you will be issued the access badge for persons working on the airside they require airside safety and airside drivers training if they will be driving that is to say in order to qualify for the access badge for the drivers some airports have badges that limit which part of the airport you can drive what do you have in your airport let me know in the comments below and also check if your airside access card is still valid is it let me know in the comments yes let me know in the comments because everyone working in the airport gets the opportunity to go through the aviation security training program if you work on the airside SI safety may be included in the AFSEC training, but basically nobody gets access to the badge without going through training. Some SI personnel, like the electrical, civil, and mechanical personnel, are expected to perform their roles based on previously acquired knowledge academically in the field of training sometimes even airside officers and marshalers compliance officers and even uh, wildlife management personnel are expected to have deeper knowledge in SI safety but the issue is now that you have gained access to the airside the question is what area expertise do you have what knowledge are you bringing onto the airside remember you have been enrolled and put in a particular department unit or a, a, a section what is expected of you do you need academic qualification for it you must be able to provide um do you need professional certification you must know electrical officers need academic qualification in electricals and once they start working on the airfield they need to be certified in either uh, AGL 1, AGL 2, or other airfield professional training as required by the CA. You are therefore expected to conduct your inspection or audit using this knowledge. Airside operations officers and others must understand the airside layout. Now, this knowledge you do not learn it in school. Once you enter the airfield, you start learning about the airside layout, the safety requirements for various zones. Your knowledge on the facilities and services will guide you in your inspection. Civil engineers will apply their knowledge in pavement and structure and markings to assess the relevant facilities. So some knowledge you must bring along, some other knowledge you pick up whilst you work in the aerodrome is very important to know this but one thing is that all personnel work, working on the air site in addition to their certified role must have virtually equal knowledge in air site safety if you are with the mechanical team electrical team civil team air site operations compliance uh, ground handling uh any third party uh, role as long as you are working on the airfield your knowledge in airside safety must be equal to any other person on the airside. That is very important. And despite all the knowledge or experience that you are supposed to acquire, your CAA, your Civil Aviation Authority, have basic requirements that your company must endeavor or ensure 
that you are trained in in order to perform your roles. Now, this training may be performed virtually or in person. All personnel are required to perform any uh, all personnel required to perform any activity that has impact on airport operations or aircraft safety must undergo training in as many of these courses that I've listed as possible. These courses may be online, like I said, or in person. The most important aspect is that it must be documented, certified, and accredited. So you may need training in aerodrome physical characteristics, airside safety management and flight safety, risk assessment, safety management, and human factors, name them. Depending on your role, you may have to do fire and rescue operations, aviation fuel safety, aviation emergency procedures, radio navigation. You will need training one way or the other, and your organization must ensure that you have been given the right training in any or all of these areas as pertains to your job. This is very important. In all this, airside safety is the responsibility of all. Many a times, we have felt sad about the fact that one or two people have been trained and the knowledge have not been passed on. But let me also ask you, have you shared the link on all your platforms? Be it terminal operations, aviation security, customer service, RFFS, even airlines or ground handlers. Please share this link with everyone and encourage them to subscribe. If they join this channel and learn about airport safety, they will save you the stress of non-compliance on the air side. I'm encouraging you all to share this link with everyone in the airport, everyone in the airport, because air side safety is the responsibility of all. So considering the volume of training, programs in which one must be trained. You saw the list that I put out in the previous slide. Believe me, it will take years for you to get trained in all the areas, even if that is possible. You must make effort towards your own training needs. Some companies have incentives to support their personnel who are initiating their own training and personal development. Others don't. But all persons have to motivate themselves to be fit and competent in doing their jobs. Any liability that results from how you perform your duty can harm your company, but it may hurt you more emotionally and professionally, knowing that because of a mistake you committed, an aircraft has crashed, lives are lost, or an aircraft that is landing with your relative on board is not landing on a safe runway because you didn't or you are not confident of the inspection you performed on your runway. So it is important that you encourage yourself. Share this link to encourage someone else to also initiate their own personal development. This is, that, this is why I am so passionate about building this channel because I believe if we share the knowledge, I may be landing in your airport and you having this knowledge will make it safe for me. You may be landing in, a, in an airport in another country and knowing that your colleagues in that country have the knowledge required to receive aircraft safely, you will land confidently. So please go ahead, share it with people you know in your airport, in other airports, in other countries, so that this uh, training will go global. Aviation training is very expensive, and I am glad to be contributing my quota to share the knowledge. Do yours. Personal development includes reading your aerodrome manual, your own airport operational manual. Look for them, read them, and know what is expected. Review previous inspection and audit reports. Use online search engines. 
you go to Google and you can key in any word you don't understand and you will have meanings and materials to understand them. Learn from personnel with greater experience. Those who have had the opportunity to be trained, go to them, ask them for the materials and learn from it. Learn from your peers. When you go out together, be confident and ask each other questions so that you can share your ideas and get the best info. And also verify hearsays. Don't take things for the way they were said. Verify. Go into your own records. Find their nexus. Find your own manuals. Find out why a, a, a certain activity is performed in a certain way. And also subscribe to this, plan, uh, to this channel. You are on this platform for a purpose. Be the messenger to spread the news. Be the messenger to make your colleagues aware of what is available on this platform. Now that you have gained the knowledge, either through formal training or personal development, the question is, do you have the tools required to perform an inspection? Do you have the tools? Do you know what you need? Do you have the uh, 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 checklists that are required to perform your inspections? Let's take time and go through them. So depending on the type of inspection you are conducting, you may need some of the following. And the following cover uh, 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 personal safety. To ensure a successful inspection, you must ensure that you and the persons around you are safe. Therefore, you need a reflective vest, which will help with visibility. It helps the tower to easily spot you. Vehicles and uh, operators and pilots can tell the position of inspectors on the runway or within the runway vicinity. So it's very important that before you go to the airside, you are in your reflective vest at all times. It's very important. Also, you will need radio for communication. You will need radio for communication. It is very important to be able to speak to ATC because without the radio, you will not be able to communicate your location or hear from the ATC tower. If you are moving into the maneuvering area, you will need your radio on you. Also, you need to protect yourself with an earpiece or headset. Earpiece or headset. Because of aircraft noise, aircraft noise, you need to have your earplugs in place so that when you are working on the apron and aircraft engines are turned on, it will not have a negative effect on you. It is very important to have your earpiece available to use whenever required. You also need your safety boots to protect your feet when walking through pavements, on paved area, locations, and other spots around the aerodrome. You need to protect your feet because during an inspection, you don't know where you may find yourself. So you need to be fully protected in order to successfully complete your inspection. Also, you need Your equipment and guide materials, tools such as measuring wheels, uh, GPS to confirm coordinates, measuring tapes, telescopes need to be available to you in order to perform your inspection well. If you are inspecting a wet runway, you may need to have the tools provided for your GRF program. If conducting wildlife inspection, you may need the bed carrying equipment outlined by your airport for inspection. In addition to the tools, you must also have guidance materials in the form of checklist or a log sheet for recording your observation. Do not depend only on memory as it may fail you. It is important to write as you inspect. 
in addition your tools and your safety you will also need a vehicle in moving up and down the airfield the vehicle must be cleared for airside access it must meet the requirement of at least having a beacon radio communication and any other standard set by your airport you may be also working with a team ensuring that each and everyone is appropriately dressed for the inspection it is very important to ensure that you are all safe on the air side and prior to the inspection some tools may require calibration ensure that your tools are well calibrated and will read the correct values for you the wheels of the measuring equipment may have worn out and may not read may not be reading the right values if you have a plastic measuring tape it may have stretched out and will give errors in reading so it's important that you have a standard uh, a standard reference for calibrating such tools and also confirming that you are getting the right values even checklist may be outdated and not contain the right information in relation to the uh, what is on ground all this must be checked prior to the inspection so i believe you can now understand what knowledge you need what experience you must acquire even how to acquire that knowledge or experience which could be through formal training or personal development listening to uh, 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 presentations like this on your own will give you the experience in addition to that you have to make sure the tools that you are using are correct and appropriate for the inspection these are things you need you need to perform your radio test before you go into the restricted areas review your checklist make sure that each member on your team is aware of what is expected of them it is very important to do all these things so before we bring the presentation to an end the question i'll ask is that let your input come i will ask your i want to ask your opinion on what our next presentation sh uh, should focus on what should i focus on in my next presentation should I focus on airport layout and airside facilities? Because I've done with the inspection, what is required, what documents you need, and now we are going to start the inspection. But should I go with airport layout and facilities for you to know your airside facilities better? Should I do that? Or should I go deeper into the airside inspection checklist? Should I go deeper so that we look at the standards and what your checklist is also saying and the third option is should we go have an exposition of our annex 14 should we have an exposition of the annex 14 so that we dive straight in there take it one item at a time and explore what the annex 14 has for us i need your opinion on this if you wish us to dive straight in let me know in the comment section no comment means no presentation in the coming week i am waiting for your comment i want us to do this together so join me just subscribe press the like button very important press the like button so when people are searching for this channel they can easily find it press the like button okay so to end the day i'll give you my bullet points personal development is a personal choice self-development is a personal choice the reward is self-confidence the benefit is beyond your organization and the potential opportunities is 
International. Personal development is the way to go. Airport Safety Channel, your channel of knowledge and experience is here to help you in your personal development goal. You are not alone. Let's do this together and make our airports the safest place for any aircraft to land. Thank you very much for staying with me. Help us to reach 500 subscribers before 31st August. It takes only a second. Encourage your colleagues to connect to this channel. Subscribe, click the bell, click the like bell, and share with one and all. Thank you very much and stay safe.